Hello Space Engineers and welcome to this 3 minute tutorial today having a look at sensors. If we jump into the toolbar configuration by pressing the G key we'll find sensors in the program block group. Alternatively we can just search for sensors and put the individual item in our toolbar. You can see on the graphic next to me that the sensors do have a specific orientation and also an indicator light on the front so now we'll just have a quick look at what that all means. So here I have three sensors set up. The one on the far left has a red light which means it's either turned off or doesn't have any power going to it. The middle one has a green light which means it's unactivated. The one in front of me has a blue light and this means that something is setting off the sensor and in this case it's me standing in the sensor range. Now I'll show you how to set up a sensor, we'll head over to the store which has a sensor on the side of it. First of all to help me set up the ranges I'm going to make them visible. To do this I go into the info tab and select the show sensor field range option. Then I go into the control panel, select my sensor and turn on the show on HUD option. Now the sensor range shows as a red shaded area which makes it easier to see when you're making adjustments to the range. By sliding these bars back and forth I can set the range of the sensor to a maximum of 50 meters or a minimum of 0.1 meters for each of the six axes. Bearing in mind that larger ranges will increase the power consumption. Today though I'm looking at the equivalent of approximately one block either side of the door. Now we want to look at what will activate the sensor. By default it will activate when players enter the sensor range. However you can set it to detect small ships, large ships, stations. Bearing in mind if you connect a ship to a station or as a player you sit down in a seat then the sensor will then consider that ship or player part of that grid. We can also adjust the settings for friends, neutrals and enemies which is a useful setting if you're making a booby trap. Now we need to do the setup actions on the sensor. The left hand slot is for the action you want when the sensor is activated. So when I walk into it I want the door to open. The right hand slot is for the action that you want the sensor to perform when there isn't anything in the range. So in this example when I step away from the door I want it to close behind me. I'll leave the detection field visible for this demonstration. As I enter the field the door opens and as I exit the field the door shuts behind me. Success! Now thanks to the magic of TV I've set up a little building with a second doorway enabling for a basic airlock. Heading back into our first door we've got a vacuum just on the inside that shuts behind me before the other one opens up meaning I don't lose any oxygen out of this pressurised room. Now heading outside again through our basic airlock, the inner doors will open and then shut behind me, then the outer doors will open and we're only losing the oxygen out of the airlock itself. The sensors can only activate individual items or groups. If we want to do multiple items we can set them up on a timer and then just set the timer to trigger when we enter the detection field with a second timer also triggering with the opposite result when we exit the detection field. And there we have quite a few things turning on and doing stuff at once. And that is 3 minutes up. Thanks everybody for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you.